Hello, my beautiful, lovey-dovey friends. How are you today? I hope everyone is well. We're going to have a little fun. What I'm going to be doing here is testing these gel stains. The American version and the Australian version in acrylic pouring, specifically a Dutch pour. Now, we know that these work really well for the Bloom recipe, okay? These I have not tried yet, but I will do an, an upcoming video on that. However, what these products really are, they are gel stains. And they are meant to stain wood, glass, fabric, stone, ceramic, okay? Um, the Australian Boom version here, I believe, is the same thing. However, it may be used for even more things. I haven't fully researched it. I just know it's Australia's version of a gel stain. So, and they are scented. Are these scented? I wonder. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to sniff them when I open them up. <laughs> anyway, so what I thought I would do is a comparison video. I'm going to mix up a few of these Unicorn spit colors and these are the sparkly ones. They are so pretty I'm going to mix up a few of these boom colors and then I'm going to mix up some regular paints such as You know tube paints. I got a Prussian blue a beautiful ultramarine violet blue shade I'm also going to use a couple of deco arts this time primary blue sky blue topaz um, Royal Navy, and then this beautiful modern masters called Glacier Blue. All right, so I'm going to show you how I'm mixing these. Let me set up and we will get started. My whole purpose, however, for this video is just to see if they create any kind of a crazy reaction when blowing them out for a Dutch pour. Do we get crazy cells? Does this provide better cells? And lacing than the the unicorn spit. It'll be interesting to find out. I've never used these products. Well, I've used the boom in the the uh, bloom technique, but I've never used like for Dutch pours any of this stuff. So I'm excited to find out too. Okay, first thing you're gonna want to do is put gloves on because this is a gel stain. It stains, <laughs> so make sure you have your gloves on. So what I'm going to do here, very simple. I'm going to show you how I mix a boom gel, how I mix a unicorn spit, and how I mix a tube paint, okay? I'm not going to show you how I mix all of them because it's all going to be the same, but I just thought I would show you the difference between the three different types of products. So the first thing I want to do with the unicorn spit is give it a good shake and then I'm gonna just put some in the cup and thin it down with my flow trawl, which is in this cup. This is American flow trawl that I have strained, okay? You always wanna make sure you strain your flow trawl. The Australian flow trawl, you don't have to because it's very thin and it doesn't really um, produce like clumps or anything like that but the american does so you want to make sure you strain it so that doesn't end up in your artwork all right so i'm just gonna pop the lid off of these they are brand new and again this is one of the sparkle colors and it is called i think sapphire something sapphire swift i'll put some in the cup and then show you what it looks like These have a little bit of an essential oil smell to them. Almost like a, a tea tree or eucalyptus smell. All right, so let's look at this color. You see, it's nice and sparkly. Very pretty. So what I'm going to do is now add some flow trolley. And you saw how much I put in there. Just kind of covered the bottom. No exact measurement or anything like that. 
I'm going to fill this cup up halfway with the flow trawl. And then give it a swirl. Now we want the consistency to be on the thinner side because we are going to be doing Dutch pours. Now, another thing to note is these will look a lot lighter when they're wet. Once the flow trawl dries and your painting is dry, they will come back to color, okay? They'll come back to their original color. So that's a very nice consistency for a Dutch pour. Flows nice and fast off the stick, leaves a tiny little mound on the bottom there. Or on the surface, I should say. And that's what we're looking for. So that's how I'm going to mix all the unicorn spit colors. As for the boom gel, going to give it a good shake. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. The consistencies are extremely similar. Add some Floetrol until the cup is half full. Give it a stir. And voila. Perfect for the Dutch pour. Perfect consistency. Okay? Now, the Boom Gel, they do not have sparkly colors, but they have pearlescent colors. So, it's that pearl shimmer kind of look versus the sparkle. As for the tube paints now, those are a lot thicker. Okay? So, those are going to take a little bit of water. So, what I'll do is take my Prussian Blue here. I'm going to put some into the cup. The good thing about Dutch pours is you don't need a lot of each color. So a very large grape size amount. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of my Floetrol in here. Why only a little bit? Because depending on the paint brand that you're using and um, the color even, sometimes they will clump on you. Silver is a known clumper. So what I do is I add a little bit of the flow trial in there at first, just to thin it down a little bit. Then I will go ahead and fill it up. This way you don't end up with a whole bunch of clumps that you're trying to work out. And like I said, it depends on the, the brand and uh, the color, believe it or not. Now paints like this, Deco Arts, they will never clump on you. So you can just go ahead and throw all of your products in at once. But uh, tube paints are a different beast. Alright, so that is much thicker than and not that you can see because it's a dark color that is much thicker than my other colors so even though it's running off the stick like the other colors were and it's leaving a, a mound on the surface that mound is more fluffier looking to me and more thicker so what i will do is i will go ahead and add a little bit of water Just a little bit. That was maybe a half a teaspoon, you know, four or five drops. You don't want to add in too much because then if it's too thin, then you're going to have to add paint to it to make it thick again. And what happens when that happens is you have to get a whole new cup, put the fresh paint into the cup, and then slowly pour this in. Because if I go add tube paint into this right now it's going to clump if i try to mix it in all right because it's a tube paint all 
I think there is a squirrel having a party on my back deck right now because it's something's banging out there. All right, so I added in just a tiny, tiny bit more water. That was about five more drops or a half a teaspoon. And now I can just feel with the stick that it's the same as the others. It's flowing off the same. It's not fluffy looking. The, the puddle at the bottom there, the little mound, it's looking the same as the other. That's, that's what you want. You want to just flow these paints off the stick and look at the way they look when they hit that surface and while they're flowing off the stick and then you'll know they are perfect. They all match. If you have issues with consistency and you need a foolproof way to figure this out, I have a video. I'm going to link it in the description. There's a free downloadable printable chart that you can print out. You can mix up your paints and test to see if they're all the same consistency. The video that I put in the description will show you step by step how to use that chart, okay? For giggles, I know a lot of people starting out use these uh, craft paints. I'm going to mix up one of these really quick for you now. Again, I'm just going to, just like with the gel stain, I'm going to just cover the bottom of the cup, you know, I'm going to pour all of my Floetrol in there at once because I know it's going to be fine. It's not going to clump. More of a fluid paint. And I'm going to give it a swirl. And this, I could tell just by mixing it, is going to be a perfect consistency for what we need to do today. And it's going to match these two without adding any water. Perfect. All right, so that's how I'm going to mix all of these paints for the two Dutch pours that I'm going to be doing. So I will be right back with all of the paints mixed up and we will get started. So here's how I'm going to do this. This canvas here, I'm going to use the Unicorn Spit colors with a few random um, regular tube paint colors, which I'll tell you the names as I go. I'm going to kind of just pour the colors on the outer border here and just blow them in. We are testing these out to see how they work, okay? So what I'm going to do here is take my white. Again, I'm gonna show you the consistency of those paints. I'm going to put some in the center of the canvas, just like so. And then I'm going to tilt it around and cover the entire canvas. Okay, because I decided to do multiple tests in this video, kind of ran a little long, so I decided to speed up these parts here that are just self-explanatory. So I started off by putting the colors down, no particular order. I just put down some of the tube paint colors, the unicorn spit colors. I did, however, make sure to sandwich the metallic um, gold and the pearl colors in between regular colors so they would create more cells. All right, and you know what I'm gonna do? which typically I don't do. I'm gonna border this with some white and blow the white over the color and then blow it out just for the hell of it. I know a lot of times you lose a lot of your color when you do that, but I'm in the mood to do it, so. I cannot be told otherwise. All right, so now's the point where I'm going to torch my air bubbles. Pop them all. All right, and I'm going to now turn on the blow dryer, my little flow we're gonna be using today. 
I have an identical one that's white in my Amazon shop if you're looking for one of these. And um, yeah, so let's start blowing here. Okay, I forgot I was doing an edge Dutch pour. <laughs> and I decided to do something really silly here, which I will explain to you in a second. But put it this way, after I blew out this first paddle, I said to myself, you dummy. So I'm going to explain in the next clip what I did wrong here and tell you what you should do. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> I just totally gave up after this first pedal because I realized that I just blew all of my color off of the canvas by blowing that white over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more color and then try to blow it around. But do you see how beautiful this lacing is? It is absolutely gorgeous. I am shocked. I'm absolutely shocked that they worked that well. Let me show you this really quick before I alter it. It worked really, really well. So this here looks like bleeding, but it's really not. It's just that color mixing with the uh, white because I put the white on top. Very pretty colors, though. All right, so let me get some more paint onto this. I may even try to scoop some of this off of the table and just put it back on there. I don't know. Let me, let me see. So I'm kind of going to just scooch this back like this. Okay. Just like that. Same thing over here. I'm gonna now fill this in with white and add some more color there. Just because I just, I can't believe I did that. That's all I'm going to say. Actually, I can't believe I did that. What am I saying? <laughs> Typical Tammy. All right. So here, I'm going to fill this in a little bit, and I'm going to turn the blow dryer on and kind of level it out. So it's an even playing field. So you may be saying to yourself, Tammy, are you nuts? There was color on that canvas. Why are you scraping it off and adding more color? It's because down towards the edge of the canvas, yes, there's color. But when I went to go blow the petals out into the white, it was dragging. It was very slow and therefore wasn't flowing and you cannot develop a pretty petal that way. So that's why I decided to pull it back a little bit and then add more color. Now this is for real, for real. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna show you really quick what I did wrong on that first one, not even thinking, because I never put white around like that and blow it over and blow it out. So I started here and blew it all the way out. I should have just lightly blew it halfway over, the white halfway over this section to about here and then worked it out. But instead I went right off the canvas. But hey, that's me. You guys are used to that over here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to come in with the blow dryer and I'm going to push it back halfway, about halfway. And then I'm going to have that puddle of paint that's sitting between the edge and that halfway point that I'll be able to blow upwards and I'll get more flow out of it. You see how it's flowing more because there's more paint on the canvas. So that's why I decided to do that. 
Now this is a small canvas and it's very, very hard to design something like a Dutch pour on one of these because there's really not a lot of room for the composition. So I kind of just wormed my way around the edge there and blew out the colors. And you'll see here on the edge there, there wasn't much color. So I decided to add a few colors and the result that happened from me layering down that primary blue from deco art the modern mass or no i'm sorry the sky blue topaz from deco art the 24k uh unicorn spit and then a that was a uh, glacier blue i believe and then dioxazine purple look at the difference in the lacing and cells in this one area here when i blow it out because i layered the paints differently they had a different reaction all right, so how beautiful is that? Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. That is incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Very shimmery. Very, very shimmery. Well, this is going to be gorgeous under horizon. All right, well, let's put this one to the side and move on to the boom gel stain. But I can't believe that. I don't know what I did, man. <laughs> Most times I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> So now I'm going to do the same thing except with the boom gel stain. So let's see how this one goes. So this one area here I'm just playing around with because I want to get it to blend in with that side petal. And then we're going to get rid of all of it and we're going to try a ring pour just to test. Yes, it's a pretty Dutch pour, but I wanted to do some testing. So that's what it looked like when I was done with the Dutch pour. And then we went and blew it all backwards and did a ring pour.
right, so just finishing up here, I had a lot of paint on this canvas, so I had to keep tilting. Too bad I couldn't keep the original design, but that's what happens when you add way too much paint onto the canvas. So I liked both of these products. They both worked equally the same to me. And yeah, I have no complaints. So in the description of the video, I'm going to tell you where you could buy these types of products. I have all of my information down there below. That video that I told you about on consistency, if you need that, and all of the ways that you can follow me on social media, plus so much more information. So the next video that will be out will be this Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you there. And uh, make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is rung so that you get notified of new video releases. I love you all. Until the next one, my friends, happy pouring.